Hey, welcome to the One Piece of the Time Distilling Institute with your host, the alchemist of Indiana's Black Forest, Alan Bishop. Hey, this channel is all about home distilling and legal distilling. If you've got questions, reach out to us in the comments below, social media, or via bishopshomegrown at gmail.com. And don't forget to check out thealchemistcabinet.com. So I just realized I hadn't really <clears throat> done a garden update for One Piece of the Time Distilling Institute. So, uh... Those of you out there in internet land probably don't know this, but um, one of the reasons I got back into distillation in my 20s after growing up in a moonshine family was because I got really into prepping and survivalism and I was really into plant breeding. <clears throat> and I turned the old farm into a, the old tobacco farm into a organic produce farm. It wasn't really certified organic, we called it ecologically grown, meaning that um, you use common sense to do things. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with organic or certified organic, except that, you know, rattlesnake venom is also organic. It'll still kill you. So you gotta be careful with some of that stuff too. Anyways, um, I showed you the greenhouse early in the year and I thought I'd show you our main garden. We've been harvesting now for a while. So we've already harvested, damn, uh, we had Japanese purple mustard greens we harvested three times. We've harvested the Swiss chard four times. It'll be ready to harvest again later this week. We've harvested the collard greens three or four times. We're digging some potatoes now. We've been harvesting a little bit of okra here and there. I'll have beans this week. We've had green onions, lettuce, uh, tons of zucchini and yellow squash. And every time I take something out of the garden as I harvest, I replant it. My goal this year is no empty spots in the garden for as long as possible. And then we're going to do a huge fall garden as well. And uh, I think we're going to invest in another small cold frame. I do have two larger ones up at the farm. Uh, but them being as far away as what they are, it's impossible for me or the wife to get up there consistently enough in the wintertime to keep heat to them. So we're going to put a little one in down here for right now until one of these days we move to the farm. And uh, we're going to use that to extend the season, hopefully up to about Christmas. But, um, you know, gardening is a big part of, you know, being as self-sustainable as you possibly can. It is a myth to be completely 100% self-sustainable. Uh, I mean, go back and you even look at... Uh, you know the plantation cultures and the farm cultures people were good at a few things they were very self-sufficient at those things and then they made excess of it to trade to other people that were better at things that they weren't good at so flip the camera around and give you a little tour anyways so so we've got two new rows of beans here that i just planted for some late beans a little winter squash here on the end that's actually heirloom uh cotton brown and green down the middle bishop's red okra over here so this was given to me by uh, Fred Bishop, not my uncle Fred Bishop here in Pekin, but a different uh, line of bishops that we're actually not related to several years ago. And uh, it grows large pods of okra that don't really get tough. And so it's really nowadays the only okra that we grow. Um, all these tomatoes, this jungle of tomatoes you see right down the middle strip of the garden, these are all uh, basically land race tomatoes that i bred over several years they're all paste tomatoes so they're all going to be used for you know sauce or sauce and salsa and things of that nature some of them are hollow so they make good stuffing tomatoes you make like tuna salad or egg salad or something like that um, we grow a couple slicers but not that many i mean you know if we need juicing tomatoes i'll go buy them i just don't really want to put the room towards growing them if i don't have to when these are so much more valuable valuable to us for so many other projects uh, including drying them out. Um, let's go this direction. So you have to ignore some of the weeds here and there. That's part of, you know, growing ecologically. You're using common sense and uh, <clears throat> weeds are part of that. We pull as many as we can. So we've been digging uh, our potatoes here. There's two lines of red potatoes up there here. I've dug part of them here the past few days for the 4th of July. We've eaten those, made potato salad and uh, stewed potatoes, or not stewed potatoes, but um, I held grilled potatoes and squash and all that stuff. Uh, over in here was a line of onions we've taken out. We've now planted back. There's some beans in here. There's beans where the potatoes were as well. I put in some late summer squash up through here. You will see some copper um, windings here. These are electroculture. For those of you who don't know what electroculture is, look it up. It's something that I do very much uh, believe in because I have seen it work. And in between all these late squash, I planted beans as well uh, in this line. Over here is the Japanese red mustard, which is going to seed. We're letting it do that on purpose because I plan to gather seed from it. This stuff, if you guys like pungent greens, that's the most pungent green I've ever had. I love it, and I plan on growing quite a bit of it this fall slash winter and a lot of it next year. Swiss chard here, Fort Hook Giant. 
Uh, we will probably try to overwinter that and get seed off of it. Um, we have cut the hell out of this Swiss chard. I mean, I've cut it four times, and as you can see, it's got enough leaves on it now. It can be cut again. The only reason I'm not cutting it at the moment is because I just cut collard greens a couple days ago, and I'm eating on a great big old pot of collard greens right now, but I will eat greens every day of the year and never get tired of them, guys. Let's see, walk on up. There's potatoes. They're in the reaching the end of their life cycle here. They've bloomed, they've done the whole thing. I was going through and just hand picking off the Colorado potato beetles and crushing them. Um, I'm not even doing that now because they're so far into their life cycle that's not a big deal if they get eaten down a little bit. It's not gonna hurt anything. I'm not gonna lose any yield. Um, heirloom collards down through here. These are all heading collard varieties. Oh, oh, what do I see over here? Some kind of insect. What we got there? I don't know what that one is, but we're, we'll come back to it. Anyways, tall taguettes, we use those for distillation a lot. They're also excellent in your garden, just tall marigolds. As you can see, they're kind of a, you may or may not be able to see it on the camera, they're kind of a June bug trap. So right now it's June bug season and um, they are on my pole beans. They do tear your pole beans up. I've been going through and knocking them off into uh jars with dish soap in them to kill them we're not on the marigolds i don't mess with them they can mess with the marigolds all they want to i just don't want them on my damn pole beans so <clears throat> some more winter squash some cabbage starting to head up nicely winter squash winter squash actually those might be summer squash i can't remember there you can probably see some potato beetles behind them you'll see this little trellis with the wire on it that is uh, some Kentucky Wonder pole beans for late in the season. Coming along, starting to grab the wire now. Walking up through here where there were some other onions at. Some more squash out here. This is definitely winter squash or pumpkins. It's got uh, starting to get some tendrils to it. Still, of course, tomatoes back there. Kentucky Wonder pole beans, about a quarter of them trellis. There's a part of a row over there that's not trellised as well. Um, here's what's left of our green onions which we've hilled up and now they're making great big huge onions we've been eating on those for a while now still got a few left in between where i've dug them out i have hilled up and actually there's one coming up i gotta pull this sweet potato vine too uh, before it takes everything over but late cucumbers i've got down through here in hills there's another one another one <clears throat> and on and on and on here's some uh some other pole beans i don't remember which ones these are um, I like pole beans, but dealing with the June bugs is starting to suck a little bit. But it'll be all right. We'll get a good crop off of them. Just have to come through and pick the bugs off once or twice a day. Come down here to the end. I planted this stuff a little bit later over here. <clears throat> so this is some of our land race winter squash in these hills. Tennessee musk melon over here. If you guys never had a true Tennessee musk melon, you don't know what you're missing out on. If you love cantaloupe and that muskiness of it, this is by far the muskiest cantaloupe out there. The only problem is they split really easily, especially with a little bit of rain. Oh, probably a little more winter squash over here. I'm more than likely going to regret planting it over here because the pepper patch is in this direction too. As you can see there's peppers all down through there of all kinds. So, <clears throat> starting to get some green beans on. I'll have enough for a little mess on these pole beans here and another day or two i already come out here and knocked the june bugs off once today and they're already back may have to do it again yet we'll see part of it part of it there's beans hanging in there all over the place really guys i may may even be picking some beans tomorrow night we'll see excuse me sunflowers so i've been collecting sunflowers for probably 20 years <clears throat> every time i see a new color new variety whatever try to pick it up and I just let them cross back and forth and then I try to go through and select for multi-headedness like this one's gonna have heads all over it and then color and then I also select for seed because I like to use sunflower seed and distillation Getting the peppers down here got a few tomatillos over here with a volunteer tomato popping up and the white half runner beans on the back side they're just now starting to bloom Bunch of different kinds of hot peppers down through here as well. 
there's one of the jars of insects that I've been collecting. I bet that smells wonderful today after it got as hot as it did. More of those white half runners that are not trellis, and you can see they are running into the tomatoes. Gardens don't have to be pretty to be productive, guys. More peppers. Uh, can't remember what kind of bush bean this is, but uh, <clears throat> she's got some beans on her already, and she's flowering right now again. A lot of times with bush beans, I can get them to, uh, to put on two or three pickings if I really work at them. Some more of those tagettes back there. And then here's our zucchini that has done crazy for us. These plants right here on this end, I'm just letting them put on zucchini for seed on this end, the last two or three plants, because uh, these have done so well for us and we've got them decently isolated from anything else that's blooming right now. And then these right here, I've been picking off of, and you can see they're beat up. They're starting to lose a few leaves here and there, uh, but they are still blooming and they are still putting on zucchini. I cut some out here earlier. So, walk over here and I'll show you a couple other little things we got going on. Did a few little gardens this year. Yeah, we are right by the highway here, so you're going to get some traffic noise in this video. I apologize, but it is what it is. <clears throat> so, over here, I need to come in and cut these walnuts off that are on the bank of the highway. Walnuts put off poison to keep other things from wanting to grow around them. If you didn't know that, sunflowers do the same thing a lot of times. Uh, yellow squash these have done okay but they've already had some uh, vine borer on them this year they haven't done nearly as well as the zucchinis have but we're letting them go plants are decent now they've got some damage to them but we're still getting squash off of them although it ain't real big got some heirloom strawberries over here actually these are wild musk strawberries that are growing along the railroad that I've transplanted and I'm just kind of letting them get it home and make some runners right now little Nicotiana rustica we grow for ceremonial reasons got four of those plants in here this is our cucumber trellis i'm slowly trying to get the cucumbers trellised onto it you'll notice they are blooming like crazy now luckily um, i noticed down here on the end on the far end that's not trellised we do have some little cucumbers in there a little more yellow squash here another little line of sunflowers there you notice how it drops off right there it's because all those leaves from the walnut and all the roots from the walnut run across there. It's keeping them sunflowers from wanting to grow. They're struggling. These over here are all doing well. There's a nice one there. Little one blooming there as well. And then <clears throat> I didn't have any luck planting any field corn this year. Um, so we found out that the brewers blackbirds like to dig up our corn as it sprouts. And I planted amanda palmer three or four times just small plots of it and i'll be damned if they didn't get all of it so i waited until late uh i don't know maybe about june 20th and i took some old school astronomy domine sweet corn which is a sweet corn that i bred myself years ago it's actually been offered for sale before through baker creek heirloom seeds and uh that seed hadn't been grown out in hell i don't know probably eight or nine years so it wasn't real strong seed i had to float test it and get rid of the stuff i didn't want and then I thought, well, I'm going to do some improvement work to it. So I did some uh, Golden Bantam 8-row improved in here. And we're going to cross that Astronomy Dominate to that Golden Bantam. A little bit of late spaghetti squash over there coming up. There's also some Buttercup I planted in here just the other day. So all in all, everything's doing pretty damn well. I don't know if you guys do any gardening or not, but if you do, uh, drop it down in the comments. If you do any videos on it, I'd love to see them. I love gardening, so and farming in general. Some more of those tagettes over here. A couple more sunflowers down there. But, all right, y'all. Later.